Hello YouTube, internet. I'm here today to talk about lungs and cooking them to eat. So I have, and I've been already soaked this a few times, so I have here a sheep's lung. I'll hold it up for you so you can get a good look at it. We'll, we'll take it out to get a good look at it. You'll see that it has the fat still attached to it and the main the main opening there for your for the air going down. And this one was attached to the heart and the liver. I got all three still attached via the fat. So you could cook it with the fat, but this is nice hard fat. This is great to make tallow out of. So I'm just gonna cut this off and I'm gonna put this into my fat bucket. So I have a fat bucket that I'm gonna use to make tallow. I put all my heart trimmings and I don't trim the, uh, the kidney. I tend to just eat the kidney and liver fat, but if you have any fat in here that you don't want or you're, you're not sure what you're gonna do with, if it's hard, especially, it's great to make tallow. Now the rest of this here, I probably am not gonna eat myself, the rest of this attachment, but this, I'm gonna cook it and I'm gonna give it to my dog. So I have a big dog who just loves to eat all the extras that we don't eat ourselves. And, uh, oh, there's a little bit of blood that came, bloody stuff that comes out, no big deal. It's gonna cook anyway. Now you can cook this in a few different ways, but there's a couple things that you wanna watch for. So first of all, you'll see that this is uh, quite bruised actually. It's not as nice looking as you would hope. And there's a lot of red pigment, right, which shows bruising. It would be much nicer if it was uh, a fleshier, uh, kind of pink or more pink color, less red, but it's not too bad. Now, the other thing that you really want to look for, of course, is that it was harvested correctly. So it depends if you know where you got it from, but you would hope and want to make sure that none of the intestine guts came out in any way and contaminated the lungs because the lungs are very absorptive. They absorb very easy. And if I show you here in the water, real well, I won't show you now, but they float in water. So they're a lighter than water in terms of density. So I see a few cuts that have happened in my lungs here uh, before I got to them or before I did anything with them. Um, and that's probably just fine. If you really want to be safe, you could cut those portions off just to make sure that anything that could have entered in there is good. I would do that certainly if they were on the lower end uh, of the lung closer to the, like this one right here. I'm just going to cut that off just to be safe. Probably don't need to. But we can get a good look at the inside of the lungs too when we do that. And you can see what it looks like. And so you'll see the little areola or whatever they're called to breathe out of. Um, so this looks a little disgusting, but it's not too bad otherwise. When I take this out, I'll show you the rest of the video when I finished cutting the rest off and we'll plate it uh, later tonight. I have company coming over. Don't know if they're going to try this with me. Uh, but my dog will eat everything, right? He'll eat all of this. Uh, cartilage and fat and stuff. Anything that I don't eat, he'll eat. So I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna go put it into our Instapot here. Let me just make sure I don't drip everywhere. All right, so I have an Instapot here. If you come over, you come over here, we'll see that it's floating in the water and it's never gonna go down. So a lot of people boil, but if you boil or steam, or in this case, Instapot, right? It's never gonna get under the water on its own. It's always gonna float a little bit. All right, so I love an Instapot. Use it for almost everything uh, that I cook that I don't, well, that I bother cooking. I do a lot of raw food, a lot of raw meat, but I cook some, and this one I'm definitely gonna do. I'm gonna pressure cook this for, uh, let's go 40 minutes. That should be plenty. That's gonna make it well cooked uh, and safe from anything externally, at least, as long as, hopefully, hopefully, uh, none of the intestine insides got on it, so none of the uh, none of the nasty feces should be. If it was harvested correctly, we should be fine. And that's it for now. We'll come back once it's cooked in about forty-five minutes, and we'll show me. Okay, it up. so it's cooked. It's been in the Instapot for forty-five minutes. You can see it still looks generally the same shape, but all of the fat has gotten soft, as has all the cartilage, and so my dog is going to love that. For example. I mean, it's edible. Um, I've eaten it on occasion, but I, it's not my favorite. I'll try and stick to the meat. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is one of the reasons why you might want to eat lungs is it's one of the highest sources of vitamin C in meats. And so it has just as much vitamin C as thymus 
And I guess the only thing that's a little bit more vitamin C would be um, spleen, right? Spleen has a lot more vitamin C. So along with thymus, it has the same as thymus, a little bit more than clams or testicles, um, but very good source of vitamin C. So here's this stuff. You can see, not the most appealing looking. A little bit of meat in there, but uh, a lot of grizzle and fat. And some cartilage. This is going to go to my dog. He's going to love this. Make a nice, a little bit too much fat for a dog, really. Should be a little bit more meaty, but not too bad. So the rest of this now is going to be food. And I'm going to have some of this tonight, right now. And you can see just how soft uh, all the tubes are. It's really quite soft. And it doesn't have much flavor, um, but quite healthy, of course. And you know what? I'm just going to give that little piece to the dog to give him a little bit extra protein. All right, so I'm going to cut this up. And there's a nice piece there. I'll have that uh, tonight, maybe one more. And the rest of this then I'm going to save so that I can have a little bit of vitamin C uh, with each meal that I have some lungs with. So anytime I want to get a little vitamin C and I don't have some of those other things, I'll try and do this. Um, otherwise, not too much special with lungs. Uh, they have a little bit of calcium, not quite as much as stomach uh, while I'm here. Here's some stomach. Here's a honeycomb tripe. So honeycomb tripe, right, has lots of um, calcium in it. Um, and I'll have some of that with my meal as well. So if I'm gonna plate this, I'll do that real quick. We'll throw on some sliced lung, along with some tripe. And this is going to be delicious. Don't need to add any salt or pepper or anything else if you don't want to. I'm not big on spices. Uh, lots of people, of course, like to add a lot more spice than I do. Um, but there we go, here's our tripe. So I boiled the tripe for 20 minutes um, and then I accidentally let it sit a little bit longer, but you, don't, you just need to boil it long enough that it's cooked. Again, I uh, don't need to add any spices if you don't want to, but if you want to, that's good. And there we go. Uh, notice the brown color when it's cooked and you can see that it's well cooked now and very soft and tender. You can just see how, how squishy that is. Very squishy. Um, surprisingly good tasting, actually. If you really want, sometimes I fry up this in tallow just to give it a little more flavor or some ghee or something like that. There you go.